there Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations welcome to my channel welcome to another day of 20 days of cut files hosted by Confessions of a Paper Addict and you just saw their 25% off that is good through December 20th they are in New Zealand so uh, they are a day ahead so you if you're in the US you might want to purchase by the 19th to, to get your discount so I started with this nutcracker background or cut file and um, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do, but then I decided I wanted to bring in some red because I backed him in mostly purples because that is what he looks like on my son's Christmas stocking. And today we are kind of, the theme is tra um, traditions. And so we have a tradition in our family that we um, have all of our stockings so, uh, knitted on a knitting machine that my grandma had years ago and now that my grandmother um, is no longer around my mom took over the tradition quite some time ago and she made the beautiful Christmas stocking that was is in the photograph that has the purple nutcracker on it so because the stocking is red and the nutcracker is purple I wanted to have some kind of background that had both colors in it and the only paper I had that looked like that was none <laughs> um, so I had to make my own so I pulled out this paper that has this diagonal stripe resist and I think this is a Heidi Swap paper but I could be completely wrong um, I'm not 100% sure I do have a stack of a few papers that have this kind of resist on it whether it's diagonal or polka dot or whatever so I took my distress oxide inks in candy apple villainous potion and then I added some kitsch flamingo in between the pink and the purple just so there was um, a little bit of a lighter color as well and I really like the way that it looks and I'm just using my blending brushes those are from tailored expressions you can get them um, blending brushes from several different companies and they don't have to be color coordinated like mine are but they do work extremely well um, I find that they are a little bit easier to put color down with then the foam applicator although I still prefer my foam applicators when I am distressing the edges of paper um, I find that it goes on a little bit nicer for that purpose so I do see a value in both and I do have both so I'm just going to go ahead and keep rubbing this red on and the purple and the pink in varying areas there's no rhyme or reason as to where I'm putting which color. I just want it to look kind of haphazard and not as though there is a, an actual pattern that I'm creating. So I'm just kind of bringing in the different colors to all the areas. And I'm not trying to leave a whole bunch of pink. I'm just kind of using the pink to kind of soften out the between the pink, purple and the red. And I'm liking the way that it's looking. And it's it it's really hard to tell right now how it's going to look because I am going to go over it with a baby wipe and wipe off all of those resisted uh, stripes and that will leave the stripes white. So um, it's going to look a little bit different, different once I clean it up and I think it looks really cool. So here I go with my baby wipe. I'm just wiping it off, making the white stripes even more bold and I like the way that it looks. It looks pretty cool. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I think I do go in with uh, one time, one more time and clean up one area. But for the most part, it was it was nice and worked out perfectly how it was. So now I have that purple um, nutcracker and the papers that he is backed with are all from Kaiser Craft. There was a year that they had an entire purple collection for Christmas. And it was several years back, and I don't recall the name of it off the top of my head. If I remember, I will try to drop that down below for you in case that's something you're interested in. But I'm not even sure you can still get it because it was several years back. I've kind of been hoarding it because I do love purple, but um, I don't really have a need for a lot of purple Christmas decorations or Christmas pages. So this was a nice uh, way to go ahead and use it. Now you can see that is a photo of my son that is probably circa 2007 maybe. Um, the photos that I am do using for this particular series range from 2007 to 2009. Um, so 
it's kind of, I'm kind of going back and forth between the years to get everything documented that, um, or to meet the, the prompts that Virginia had, uh, given us for the month. So I decided to go ahead and back the entire thing on black. I think I needed to bring in a darker color just to kind of tone everything down and to make it so that it has a nice frame. And I did end up switching the way or, or the orientation of my paper. So there's more purple closer to the uh, nutcracker. And then I am just pulling in these black thickers. And this is one of the few black thicker sets that I have a lot of letters in. And I believe it's because I have two sets of them. And so my title is just going to be the stock, the stocking tradition. And um, this really is about that tradition of the stocking. I have documented that much later uh, in probably my 2000, mm, I'm going to say 2018 or 19 um, December daily type album, but I wanted to document it um, earlier because it's, you know, if my kids ever get these albums, they might want to split them up. And this is a good one. It would, my son would really, this is his, and um, he would probably want this one. Um, whereas my December daily, it's actually, um, I believe I talk about it and it doesn't have a picture of him on it. It has my, maybe my daughter on it or something. Anyway, um, so there's no reason that I can't actually tell about that twice. And I actually document it a little bit differently anyway. So it's not the exact same story. And actually, the funny thing is, we have a collection of nutcrackers, so I, I can mention that as well, because um, my husband is really into nutcrackers, and so we do have a collection of those that we have at Christmas time uh, when we decide to pull out all the decorations. We don't pull out all the decorations every year because um, we have so many, and our house is, is very small. So <laughs> um, we have more than our house will allow. So we are actually weeding through some of them this year and paring down just a bit, but I'm pretty sure the nutcrackers are all staying. Okay, so I'm liking how this is looking. It's very simple so far, but it's got a lot of um, impact because of those bright, bold colors. Now those two stickers that I just stuck on there were from an old Heidi Swap st sticker sheet, and they just say ho, 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 and I think follow la la la, if I'm reading that correctly and this is the ephemera pack from that purple collection from Kaisercraft and it's rather elegant looking and so I wasn't really sure what I'd be able to use but I do manage to find several pieces that work out so I first I start with that purple circular piece that says December 25th because that photo is taken on the 25th and then I decide to pull in these kind of monochromatic grayish silverish uh, poinsettias. So they are actually poinsettias and they're just kind of in that frosty looking silvery gray. And so I thought that works well because all of the, um, I don't know what to call them. All of the little like circular pieces on that nutcracker are silver. And so I thought that that works really well because it pulls in the silver color. And so are, so is the, the foiled, text on where it says December 25th and that little reindeer up in the upper left hand corner. So I thought that works out really well. It keeps everything kind of simple because I do have some really busy stuff going on already. And then that journaling spot, that is a stamp from a company. I think it's called Stampability or something to that effect. And it's from like 2008. So I don't think you can get that anymore. Um, but it was the perfect size and the perfect shape for what I wanted to um, document and where I wanted to put it on the layout. So I kind of have a diagonal cluster going across from the top left to the bottom right. And I'm liking how that's looking. I just pulled in that smaller circle and that is from my uh, Elizabeth Craft Design retro labels. And that, that stamp set is getting a lot of use right now just because um, it's the perfect little stamp set to be able to add little journaling spots in whatever color you like. So I am, I see that I'm using it a lot through these first few days of this series and I'm sure I'll probably continue to use it throughout the rest of the series. So 
um, it's very versatile and very handy to have because like I said you can stamp in any color that you've got on hand and then I'm going to add some sequins just a few into each of the embellishment areas and I think that's pretty much all I'm going to do so make sure you go ahead on over and check out everyone else who's playing along with this hop there are uh, channel links are all in my description box down below so that you can easily get to their uh, videos for today and we do have both summer prompts and Christmas prompts some days they um, they align with each other but other days they do not so the summer prompt for today is fun in the sun and the Christmas prompt is traditions so today you're going to see different cut files used for different purposes because we all got to choose what cut files we wanted to use and we might be documenting very different things especially if we are using um, photos from opposite seasons so hopefully that uh, inspires you to use up cut files that you might have in your stash or um, maybe if you've got a machine pull out your machine and cut a few cut files and they really do a lot of the work for you so there's not as much embellishment embellishing that you have to do and I really like the way that they turn out. So, oh look, that photo is from 2009. I thought it was 2007. <laughs> My apologies. It's a good thing I stamped it because I do forget. I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another video.